Welcome back to my channel. As always, we bring you interesting stories to keep you entertained and informed. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out on the stories we share once we upload them. Now, let the story begin. Once upon a time in a small village called Amenze, there lived two best friends, Ada and Amara. These girls have grown up together, sharing secrets, dreams, and everything in between. They were inseparable, like sisters, and everyone in the village knew that nothing could come between them. As they grew older, life took them on different paths. Ada, the more adventurous of the two, landed a job in the bustling city of Lagos. Amara, on the other hand, got an opportunity to work in Abuja, the capital city. Although they were sad to be apart, they promised to keep in touch no matter what. Amara settled quickly into her new life in Abuja. It was there that she met Chuka, a charming and successful businessman. Chuka was kind, funny, and had a very way of making Amara feel special. They started spending more time together, and before long, Amara found herself falling deeply in love with him. Every evening, Amara would call Ada to tell her about Chuka. He's so sweet, Ada. I think I've found the one. Amara would gush, her voice filled with excitement. Ada was genuinely happy for her friend, always offering her support and advice. Meanwhile, in Lagos, Ada's life was also taking an interesting turn. One afternoon, after a long day at work, Ada decided to treat herself to a meal at a particular restaurant. It was there that she met Shuka. They bumped into each other as Ada was trying to find a seat. And Chuka, ever the gentleman, offered her a place at his table. The heat it off immediately. Chuka was charming, just as Amara has described. But of course, Ada didn't know that this was the same Chuka. They exchanged phone numbers and began talking regularly. Soon, they were spending more time together, going out on dates and sharing stories about their lives. Chuka, being a businessman, had to travel between Abuja and Lagos frequently which made it easy for him to keep both relationships as secrets. Ada told Amara about her new relationship, not knowing that she was talking about the same man Amara was already in love with. I met someone too, Amara. He's amazing. I think I am in love, Ada would say, her heart fluttering with joy. Amara would laugh and tease her, never suspecting that they were both talking about Chuka. Months passed and Chuka decided it was time to settle down. He proposed to Amara in Abuja, getting down on his knee at a beautiful garden filled with colorful flowers. Amara was over the moon and of course she said yes. She couldn't wait to tell Ada about the proposal. The wedding was planned quickly and Chuka went to meet Amara's parents to formalize their union. Unfortunately, Ada couldn't make it to the wedding because of a work emergency in Lagos. Amara was disappointed but understood that Ada's job was important. After the wedding, Amara called Ada to tell her all about it. It was magical, Ada. I wish you could have been there. Chuka was so handsome and the ceremony was perfect. Ada listened smiling on the other end of the line, happy for her friend but also feeling a twinge of envy. The following week, Chuka traveled to Lagos for one of his usual business meetings. He met up with Ada and they spent the evening together. Ada, seeing how happy Amara was in her marriage, started to feel the pressure to settle down as well. She wanted what Amara had, a loving husband and a home of her own. Ada began hinting to Chuka that she was ready to get married. At first, Chuka tried to brush it off, but Ada was persistent. 
She didn't know why he was so hesitant, but she kept pushing. Finally, Chuka gave in. They agreed to a small cut wedding, something quick and private. Chuka hoped that by keeping it low key, he would continue living his double life without either woman finding out. The court wedding took place on a quiet afternoon. Ada was overjoyed, feeling like she had finally found her happily ever after. She couldn't wait to share the news, so she posted pictures of the ceremony on her social media page. Amara, sitting at home in Abuja, was scrolling through her feed when she saw the pictures. At first, she thought it was a joke. But as she clicked through the images, her heart sank. There, in front of her eyes, was her husband, Chuka, marrying her best friend, Ada. The realization hit her like a ton of bricks. They had both married the same man. Amara's hands trembled as she died Ada's number. When Ada picked up, she was all smiled up, ready to tell her best friend the good news. But before she could say a word, Amara's voice, filled with the pain and disbelief, came through the phone. Ada, Chuka is my husband. Silence fell between them as the weight of the situation settled in. Ada's joy turned to confusion, then to horror, as she realized what had happened. No, it can't be, Ada whispered. The man she had fallen in love with, the man she had married, was already Amara's husband. Tears streamed down Amara's face as she asked the question neither of them wanted to answer. What do we do now? The friendship that had once been unbreakable is now hung by a thread, tangled in a web of betrayal and heartache. Both women were left in a state of shock unable to comprehend how they had ended up in a twisted situation. Chuka, the man who had brought them so much joy, was now the source of their greatest pain. The happy future they had envisioned was shattered, leaving them to pick up the pieces of their broken hearts. As the days passed, the reality of their situation set in. Amara couldn't bear to look at Chuka, the man who had betrayed her trust in the worst way possible. Ada too was consumed by guilt and shame, knowing that she had unknowingly hurt the person she cared about most in the world. The once inseparable friends found themselves drifting apart, their bond forever changed by the man who had come between them. They were trapped in a painful limbo neither able to move on nor go back to the way things were before. The love they had for Chuka had turned into a curse, leaving them both with nothing but sorrow and regret. Amara, unable to face the reality of her marriage, decided to leave Abuja. She packed her bags and moved back to the village without saying a word to Chuka. Ada, on the other hand, who was struggling to cope with the aftermath of the revelation, decided to serve Chuka a divorce paper, also without an explanation. Chuka was left with lots of questions, but no answers from the ladies. The two women promised each other to never let a man separate the both of them and to make sure to fulfill those promises. Amara and Ada tried to move on with their lives, but no matter how hard they tried to move on, the memories of what happened haunted them both. The end of the story was nowhere in sight, and the question that lingered in their mind was one they couldn't answer. Would they ever find a way to love again? And would they ever find a way to heal from their wound Chuka had left behind? Or were they doomed to live with the pain forever? The story hung in the balance, waiting for its final chapter. But for now, all that remained were the echoes of a friendship that had been torn apart and the sad unspoken words that would never be enough to mend what had been broken. 
Thank you for watching to the end of the story. Do not forget to leave a comment, a like, a share, and subscribe to our channel.